I'm Tommaso Poggio, and I'm the Eugene McDermott Professor at MIT in the Department of Brain Sciences in the McGovern Institute and the Artificial Intelligence Lab. As a kid, I was uh, really fascinated by what made uh, Einstein such a genius. I was really interested in the problem of understanding intelligence. If you could understand intelligence, then maybe you can repair it, improve it, increase it, and therefore solve more easily a lot of the scientific problems that were fascinating me. That's the reason why I'm interested in the brain. I think learning is the gateway to the problem of intelligence. Learning has been the main focus of my research for the last 20 years. I'm mostly fascinated by a very difficult question, which is how the cortex learns from experience. In particular, I really would like to know whether the organization of cortex in terms of layers and areas and connectivity between them may suggest new learning algorithms. I think it would be fantastic if neuroscience could suggest new approaches to artificial intelligence and computer science. I think the problem of vision is as difficult as the general problem of intelligence, because in vision, of course, you need to learn to recognize objects. We learn many strategies just from, from experience. The retina is similar to a camera. It's providing the brain with a huge array of numbers. Numbers, each one of which tells the intensity of light in a given position in the scene. What our brain does without us really being aware of it is computing on this large array of numbers and extracting information about objects and scenes. Humans are much, much better than machines in terms of being able to interpret and describe a scene under any condition and be very reliable in doing so. Uh, that's uh, a monumental task from the point of view of a computer science researcher today. Years ago, we started developing a model of the ventral stream of visual cortex, which is this part of visual cortex that is involved in object recognition. And we developed a model based on the anatomical data, the physiological data, trying to be faithful to those data. It turns out that our model was reaching a performance very similar to what humans had in so-called rapid categorization tasks in which uh, human subjects were asked whether a certain object, say an animal, is in an image which is presented quite briefly or not. And interestingly, our model had also some of the same failures that humans had. We have developed a framework for learning and derived algorithms that are now used quite a lot in different fields. This has had also the effect of bringing to the field of learning a number of mathematicians who have sped up the development of, of the field. We have applied our learning algorithms to several domains, but uh, one in particular has been seen interpretation. The first real task that we tried to tackle with learning algorithms was the task of detecting whether a face was in an image or not, and where it was. Now, this is something you find very commonly today in digital cameras. So it's interesting, it took about uh, 11 years or so for the technology to come from, from the labs, like ours, to the marketplace. Another application that we had was pedestrian detection. This was in a collaboration with Daimler. The camera was in, in, in a car and the system had been trained to recognize people from thousands of pictures. The system was able to detect pedestrians that were crossing in front of the car or may be crossing. This system is now available in some of the top-of-the-line cars like uh, the BMW 7 Series. It is always difficult to predict the future of science, but I would expect that the most interesting advances in neuroscience will happen because of new techniques. There is no question in my mind that we need computational tools if we want to understand the brain, not only in terms of gene, molecules and cells, but also in terms of what it does. 
why the brain produces intelligence. How does it do it? At some point we'll understand the brain, we'll understand how the brain produces intelligence and at that point we'll be able to make intelligent machines. They will be in fact the proof that we have understood the brain at the computational level.